Hello folks, welcome to Hidlington. We are in the beautiful Milvis Cessna 310. And as always guys, we're going to have a bit of a chat. <laughs> so pour yourself a drink and enjoy this flight. Now, at the moment, guess what? <laughs> this is quite shocking. I'm currently flying with a 10900K with a 3070 Ti using the Vario Aero. Now I have many of my settings dialed back of course, but overall I think you can see it's running pretty damn well. Now I'm getting about 30 frames per second, 35 at the moment because I'm sat on the ground here at a very beautiful Pilot Plus Oxford Airport, but we're going to get in the air and I just want to reiterate a few things. Mainly the fact that you really don't need to spend a crazy amount of money to enjoy VR. And on that note, T's and P's are all looking good. Flaps are set. Let's get airborne. That's a beautiful view down there. So let me just explain guys that for the last couple of days I've been reinstalling MSFS with this computer, with all of my add-ons, in the quest to understand how things are with a relatively mid-range computer. And I'll just put my settings on the screen now for you. You might be thinking, whoa, that's so low. <laughs> but something that I've mentioned quite a few times now in various videos, you really don't need to have every single slider of this sim maxed out to enjoy it. And you will absolutely enjoy better frames per second than you would eye candy with lower performance. And I would go as far to say that even with, say, an 8600K CPU with a 1070 Ti, that would be my absolute lowest sort of recommendations if you are looking at getting into VR and you really want to enjoy flying. That would be my lowest spec recommendation, perhaps with, say, a Rift S, if you want to really enjoy this sim with reasonable performance. Now I think part of the problem is, is that a lot of people want to turn those graphical settings up too high. It's as simple as that folks. Even if you had everything set to low, it's still a beautiful, beautiful looking simulator. Absolutely. Especially in VR. In fact, I think this sim looks better with low settings in VR than it would look on a flat screen with ultra settings simply because you cannot beat VR. So if you're really struggling and you know you really want to get into VR but you haven't got a lot of money, as I say I would recommend an 8600K Intel CPU or whatever the AMD equivalent is of that with a, I mean preferably a 1080 Ti but a 1070 Ti I'd recommend getting a Rift S if you can find a good second hand one or even the Revib G2 is still a great VR headset. Now you won't be able to use it at full native resolution. Get this landing, it's very bumpy, wow. Oh, there we go. You won't be able to use it at full native resolution but you'll still really enjoy it without a doubt. I've got so many videos on this channel guys, I'll link a few in the description below of me using the Reverb G1, G2, Rift S with a 1080 Ti um, GPU, a 1070 with an 8600K and having an absolute blast. So it is possible. And even if, say, you don't have much change spare to get a controller, I would highly recommend a VKB Gladiator standard joystick. It's about... Oh, I can't remember how much they are now, but uh, I'll put on the screen now whatever it is. 
it might be a bit pricey, but that is all really you need. You don't need to have a yoke and different flight controls for different aircraft. If you're on a budget, just get one of those. Or perhaps a uh, Honeycomb Alpha if you can really push to it. But the trouble is with that is you're going to need a throttle quadrant as well. I would recommend perhaps a Logitech Quadrant. They are really cheap on Amazon. They're about £40-£50. Pounds. So with that and a VKB Gladiator joystick, that will get you sorted. And you'll be in the air enjoying all kinds of aircraft without having to spend a crazy amount of money. Now in terms of rudder pedals, well, there is a few options out there. The CH pedals are very, very good. And mine have lasted for 15 years. <laughs> and in fact, I'm now using some, uh, I think they're called Turtle Beach Velocity 1 rudder pedals, which are a bit more money. But they do have Hall effect sensors. And, you know, the upgrade is definitely worth it if you can afford it. I think we'll go now for another uh, pattern here. I'm using the Doff Reality with this uh, system as well, by the way. And I'm really feeling the bumps here. Yeah, coming down. Oh, I love this bird, you know. I know I did say that the Baron is my favourite twin, but this is right up there, guys, as well. Rest assured, it really is beautiful. So in terms of, uh, I guess, a middle ground solution, a mid-range system... Actually, the AMD system I've been borrowing with the 7950X with the 7900XTX graphics card, that's about, well, with my discount code, that's under £3,000 for a new computer. You're probably looking at about 2829. However, some of my subscribers, well, they've actually bought an Intel based system with a 4090 off a catalogue called Very. And I'm not quite sure if that's still. You know discounted at the times recording but i will stick a link in the description below and if you can get a 4090 for that kind of price in a new build then i really recommend that you snap that up because it is the vr slayer without a doubt if we go for a landing for the outside view <laughs> that's a bit bumpy feels weird doing this but there we go come on baby get down there we go And up we go again. Fantastic. Look at these visuals. 3070 Ti. 10900K. Not bad at all, eh? Not bad at all. So in terms of VR headsets, of course, there's quite a lot of options out there, but if you're really on a budget, I would actually recommend that you get either a Rift S, if you can find one, a decent second-hand one, or a Reverb G2. That is your only options, guys. Don't be fooled in thinking that getting a Quest or a Pico is a good idea, because unless you've got a very powerful computer, even though those headsets are cheap, they don't have a native DisplayPort connection, which means it's going to be harder on your GPU than, you know, a headset with a full HDMI port. So you're going to have to either, as I say, get the G2, which is, you know, still quite expensive, £600. Or if you can find a Rift S, which I think, personally, I've still got a massive respect for the Rift S. It's a great headset. Especially because it's a lower resolution headset, but it's still a native PC VR um, connection. And it has a great display on it, and the sweet spot is better, in my opinion, than the G2. So, if you are running, say, a 1070 or 1080 Ti, the Rift S, it will run pretty well with that. Now, depending on how susceptible you are to low frame rate, that's the big key here as well. Now, for me, I'm quite happy at 30, 35 frames per second when flying like this in general aviation aircraft. I don't need really high frames. But if I was um, flying really low down and fast in, say, a fighter aircraft, you're going to feel those low frames more. 
So it also depends on the type of flying you do. So for this sort of thing, 35 frames per second is actually quite doable. It really is. Ooh, where we go? That was a bit of a bumpy one. <laughs> oh, guys, honestly, sometimes I just love doing circuits, especially in windy weather, which it is today. So that's really my thoughts down on paper, so to speak, in a video. And I will leave links to many of my videos showing VR in action with an 8600K 1070 card, a 1080 Ti, and then later on a 10900K with a 1070 Ti, sorry, 3070 Ti and a 3090. The point is, folks, is that this channel is showcasing various different systems, not just the high end, and to show you the settings that I run which makes things feel pretty decent. And I'm sure you'll agree, this sim is looking pretty good with medium settings right now. So please do let me know in the comments below, what computer are you running right now? What VR headset? Take care folks, as always, please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye for now.